Ryan, what is on your radar this morning? Well, there's been an enormous amount of attention paid this week to the surprisingly strong Democratic win in New York's special election on Tuesday, and it's being called a bellwether because Republicans significantly underperformed Trump, and in order to win back the House, they have to do at least as well as Trump or better. Now, the media's attention, for understandable reasons, has been on this ad. When our country called, he served. Pat Ryan graduated from West Point and risked his life in combat. He fought for our families, for our freedom. And freedom includes a woman's right to choose. How can we be a free country if the government tries to control women's bodies? That's not the country I fought to defend. I'm Pat Ryan, and I approve this message because in Congress, I'll fight to protect all of our freedoms. Now, that's a powerful ad, and there's an obvious reason it resonated both with the public and with the media in the wake of uh, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And on Thursday, three more states, Idaho, Tennessee, and Texas, saw abortion bans go into effect. But half of Pat Ryan's ad spending went behind a different ad, similar to the kind I talked about in my radar last week, with Democrats taking the fight directly to corporate power and linking it to high prices. Here's the ad that played in rotation in the district. Big utility companies have a monopoly on our power, so they think they can do whatever they want. I'm Pat Ryan, and as Ulster County Executive, I use my power to hold greedy corporations accountable. Like when Central Hudson Utilities was ripping off our community. I called for an investigation and demanded they repay customers and freeze rate increases. I approve this message because big corporations have too much power. It's time our families had more. Friend of the show, Matt Stoller, commenting on the ad, called it, quote, straight up populism, adding, the Republicans better hope this is an anomaly because, because what Ryan is selling sells. Now, it may seem like easy pickings going after the local power utility. Pretty much everybody hates their utility. But that punch only lands if the candidate can throw it credibly. And Democrats who've been in the tank for corporate power can't very well stand up come election time and say now they're going to fight that corporate power. Nobody would buy it. But Ryan has a record in the area, and he alluded to it in that ad. He also pioneered a universal basic income program there. So people there know that he's serious. Now, too often, the only thing Democrats focus on is messaging. How are they going to message their way to victory in the next election? They sift through polls and do focus groups and stick to whatever message works best. But people aren't stupid. If your rhetoric doesn't match your record, you just look like another lying politician. If Pat Ryan had built his career with financial support from the local power company, like many Democrats and Republicans before him, it wouldn't have worked. For instance, when Bill Clinton took over both the White House and the Democratic Party, he did so by leaning into an alliance with corporate power. When his vice president, Al Gore, tried to run for president saying he'd fight corporate power, it landed pretty flat. Take a look. I will put our democracy back in your hands and get all the special interest money, all of it, out of our democracy by enacting campaign finance reform. I feel so strongly about this. I promise you that campaign finance reform will be the very first bill that Joe Lieberman and I send to the United States Congress. And people didn't buy it. And now, of course, Joe Lieberman is the founding chairman of the dark money group No Labels. Far from taking special interest money out of politics, No Labels shields the source of private equity and hedge fund money looking for a secret way into politics to push for tax, break, tax breaks and gives it a gloss of good governance. Now, what that means for Democrats is they have to actually deliver when they're in power. And when it comes to picking candidates, they can't put their thumb on the scale in favor of a corporate Democrat because then that Democrat is going to be less electable in the general. Now, this is going to be very hard for Democratic consultants and leaders to get their heads around because for the last 40 years, moderate corporate Democrat was synonymous in their minds with electable. But that era is now over. Now, Pat Ryan is, I think, a particularly talented politician. Uh, you could just tell, even just from those two ads, but people who are from that area have said that this is, he's kind of a rising star. Um, and you can't base your entire uh, strategy around stars because there aren't, there aren't enough of them <laughs> around the country to do it. Or personalities. Or personalities. Yeah. But the model that he's laying out here uh, defending abortion rights on the one hand and then fighting corporate power on the other, 
that, that feels like a, an agenda that can get a majority support. Kind of reminds me of Jason Kander, who we've mm -hmm. talked about. I think you've interviewed him, uh, mm -hmm. talked about before. Uh, and that's where we have seen candidates like this sort of rise to the surface briefly, have these like really impressive messaging strategies. And then it doesn't seem like Democrats are ever able to adopt them on a more wide scale level, partially because of what you say, like personalities. Some personalities can pull different things off. And you know, your average Joe, um, what's his name? Joe Crowley, for instance, right. literally your average Joe right. might not be able to pull that off, despite being, I mean, Joe Crowley was fairly progressive. He just sort of aligned himself with the Democratic establishment uh, and leadership. And what's, I guess I, I'm curious how you think this can, this time, be legitimately translated. Is it money? Is it just a matter of the personalities not being able to carry a really good message? Or is it also that there's still too much money, mm -hmm. especially as the demographic of the Democratic voter switches to somebody that tends to be more educated and higher income? Um, is it that? Or is it an unwillingness to push this messaging? What, what could change that? I mean, what, one thing I've been told is that a lot of it is just muscle memory, mm. that, that Corporate power is not something that Democrats confront in a swing district. Like that's just like mm -hmm. it's just stated as fact. Like we don't do that. That's that's Ralph Nader. That's Bernie Sanders. That's AOC. Those people can talk about that. But in a swing district, we're gonna we're gonna do the things that Rahm Emanuel you know loved to do in 2006, 2008, whatever. Uh, but you also now have this class of consultants and strategists right. who are just complete mercenaries, <laughs> and whose job it is to win. Races and they're coming back with these polling numbers, being like, "Look, this message really works. Yeah. Like we're 40 points above water on if we attack corporate power. If we say that, you know, we're 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 going to take on the meat packers for driving up uh, the price of poultry and the price of pork. We're going to take on the oil companies uh, because they're dry, they're they're price gouging when it comes to gas prices, and the Republicans won't because they're in the tank for big oil. Like." This stuff is coming back in focus groups and, and in polling, just resonating so intensely that these strategists and consultants are now, are now pitching hard to the to candidates, both the Senate and the House, saying, like, look, look use this. And what one person said it's ironic because, like, most of the Democratic senators today, like in 2006, uh, 12, 18, like, got into office, like, making that argument. Then the second they set foot in Washington, they forget that that's how they got there. Yeah. So they have to be retaught that no, 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 this is this is this thing that brought you here. It it works and it works even better than it than it used to. This reminds me a lot, um, actually, on the other side of Eric Cantor losing in that shocking race mm -hmm. to Dave Bratt, who was very much a sort of Tea Party wave candidate and embodied all of those sentiments. And the the Tea Party messaging, which was despised by Republican leadership, bitterly despised yeah. by Republican leadership, was basically co-opted and then co-opted by the Republican establishment. Then they get a chance to vote on Obamacare, which they said repeal and replace, repeal and replace, repeal and replace mm -hmm. uh, for years and didn't actually do it. times one year. Yeah, yes. right. And so this is this is a different question because corporate powers are all kind of aligned mm -hmm. in different directions on that. But is some of this because small dollar donations, Bernie, AOC, Trump, have proved that you can make a ton of money without mm -hmm. relying on corporate donors to the same extent? That's not to say the Democratic establishment is just casting off their corporate right. benefactors. Um, but they, they is some of it because of that? They know yes. that you can get that money now? Yes, totally. Um, 2020. I think was a real eye-opening year uh, for particular people like Chuck Schumer mm -hmm. in that in that respect because it wasn't just Bernie in 2016 raising uh, 100 plus million dollars and then d doing you know double that in 2020. All of a sudden, all of these Senate candidates that uh, Schumer's responsible for getting elected had more money they can than they could spend. Uh, that bum they ran in Maine who who lost to Susan Collins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she finished with $15 million in the bank account. Right. So money was no longer the problem mm. because every time uh, Trump said something obnoxious, you had a ton of these Democratic voters who weren't just now giving $27 to one person, Bernie Sanders. They were giving $25 or even $50 to every Senate candidate that Pod Save America was saying right, right. was electable. And they even gave like $20 million to Amy McGrath in Kentucky yep. just, just to have fun with like, trolling Mitch McConnell and lose by 30 points exactly and, and buy a bunch of boats for consultants in that yep. in that race but so all of a sudden it's like oh 
if we can keep these people pressing these $25 buttons, that is a much even more efficient way of raising money mm. than the 90s, 2000s way of a big dinner where people are paying $10,000 to get in because you have to organize the dinner. You got to do the invites that you got to give the get, a, get the wine cave. You got to get you got to give the you got to give internships mm. to the kids of these donors like the, the person who gives $25 to eight candidates. Their kids not asking Schumer for a, an internship or a yeah. phone call or a, or a photo or a regulation to be like uh, you know rescinded so that they can you know make a little extra money. They, they want them to take office and do things. Right. And now that's going to be a problem for them. Yeah, good luck with that. Right, but that's but that's. But why, hey, yeah. you, as you yeah. said in They've the opening segment, Dark Brandon is on a roll Dark for the Brand, left. Dark Brandon, and that's why he's <laughs> he's feeding these donors. Hey, that, that is a really yeah. interesting point um, and really interesting radar. We'll keep covering this, of course, and we'll be back with more rising right after this. <laughs> 